Dr. Lilbach, I just want to thank you thank for... Thank you, Jack. It's good to be with you. Thank you. I want to thank you for being with us today here at the uh, Tradiffern Police Department right here near Valley Forge, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, matter of fact, where George Washington bent his knee and prayed over our dying troops. Uh, it's just about a mile over the hill from where we're sitting right now. But I'm um, holding in my hand a book that you wrote uh, just over a year ago, uh, George Washington's Sacred Fire. And um, I, I confess, I don't read a whole lot of uh, history, but I read this book, and I tell you, it touched my heart because when I read the testimony of, of Washington, just from the pages of, of the National Archives as you've quoted them, um, I just said, here's a man who, who really sought the face of God, and after 40 years in criminal justice, one thing that gives me comfort still is when I find a leader whether they're a police officer, a judge, a prison warden, uh, a corrections officer, uh, those men and women who are on the front lines, who see the blood, who see the death, who see the crime, uh, who touch it every day, um, to find men and women who sigh and cry over what's breaking the heart of God in this nation, and to know that some of them are crying out to God for help. Um, it just it just thrills my heart when I meet them. And then when I read your book, it was kind of like, wow, I want I want people to know that the very man who founded our nation, founded our nation's chaplaincy for the military, was a man of prayer and dependence upon God. And somehow I just thought, you know, Dr. Lilback, if there's any way I can know you better, I want to know you better. And I want you to know um, my burden for those in criminal justice. Because I really believe, and you know this, uh, being the great Bible teacher you are, that God always argued uh, through the prophets uh, against our religion unless it had with it um, hearts that cared for the fatherless, the poor, the prisoner, the stranger in our gate, and I just mentioned almost every kind of person that we fill our jails with. 98% of my women in my jail are moms. And 75% of my men in my jail are daddies. And, and I see sometimes more brokenness over sin in the jail than I even see sometimes in pulpits. And, um, and so, Dr. Lopez, I just wanted to say thank you. Today you met with uh, leaders from our Pennsylvania State Police, from our Sheriff's Department, from the U.S. Congress. But what meant the most to me was that you cared enough to talk to police officers about some great leaders in our nation. And I just want to thank you, and maybe any comment you had about your time with us here today. First of all, Jack, thank you for the privilege, and thank you for sharing with me your passion for our policemen, for men and women in law enforcement roles, because that's contagious and you've helped me to see more fully how important they are. So to all the listeners there, thank you for tuning in and thanks for supporting uh, Jack and his calling before the Lord. I guess all I can tell you is that uh, Washington was a military man and he understood very early on as he began to work with the civilian side of the world that law and order were the things that made a constitution possible why his farewell words were religion and morality are indispensable supports for our political prosperity. Morality is doing the right thing. And why do you need police officers? To keep people walking in the right path. Because order doesn't happen on its own. People have to choose to do the right thing, learn to do it, and follow through. And police officers, at the end of the day, are actually agents of love for God and the neighbor because they're helping them to stay out of even greater trouble that they're going to get in if they keep on going uncorrected. And so sometimes we get the idea of law enforcement, they're just tough people pushing people around. Actually, they're representing the very best of our society because they're trying to keep us on the track that makes civilization possible. By implication, that's what the gospel does. It does it without a policeman saying, do the right thing. You choose to do the right thing because you choose to love your neighbor and your God enough. In the absence of that, we have to have someone who keeps someone from harming others. And, of course, 
to do that work day in and day out is brutally hard on the person who does it and their family. That's why we need people who bring hope, who bring the gospel even to these leaders who are trying to do the right thing. So they're encouraged and they're committed to the right. I think Washington would be very pleased with your work, as you mentioned. He had chaplains in his army to try to encourage people spiritually to stand up for what they knew to be right. Dr. Lobach, um, again, I, I really believe, and people that know us the most know that we're working a net, and what we mean by that is we're building relationships that are mutually dependent, and we're kind of tugging on each other. And as we see this country in the next eight to ten months, um, as you cry for it from what God has laid on your heart, I'm looking forward to crying with you on what God's laid on my heart. And um, I'm sure I speak for Bob Vernon from the former LAPD, for Point Man, and for law enforcement people all over the world, that uh, we, we cannot do what we're doing without a deep dependence upon the Lord. And uh, today, here in Valley Forge, uh, you spoke that powerfully to the leaders that were here. God bless you, Dr. Lilback. May the year together be a great one. Great. Thanks Thank a lot. And Jack, I would say to, to you this great promise. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May his strength be in your life to keep you going and through that commitment encouraging many others and their calling in the next life. Thank you, Doug. Thank you.